up? It's Danielle. So for today's video, I wanted to do something a little, well, a little bit different. Um, I'm going to show you guys my grocery haul for this week. And then I'm actually going to show you how I meal plan. I'm also going to take you through what my experience was like using the Walmart grocery app, which is really cool and you know you can literally just pick up your groceries you don't even have to go into the store so i'm going to list off like the benefits of that when i get to it but for right now i just wanted to show you guys what i got and i'm also going to tell you some tips and tricks for you know meal planning that i have learned along the way because Literally, as soon as I moved in, I started meal planning and it has made a world of difference. So, anyways, let's get started. I'm gonna show you guys the haul first. So, please excuse my kitchen, it looks insane right now because I have all the groceries right here. But anyways, I did get $10 off because my mom, you know, it's like a refer a friend thing. So you get $10 off your entire purchase so I think I was up to like $54 so this ended up being like 44 and change so that's actually not too bad this is not the normal stuff that I would buy like you know I don't get chips every week I don't get shampoo every week I don't get toothbrushes every week the vegetables are basically staples and so is the chicken and the pizza <laughs> so anyways I'm just gonna take y'all through what I got so I like to have English muffins, like a sandwich for breakfast, so that's why I got these. They were cheaper than the, the Thomas ones, so I decided to give these a try. I also got one of these classic mix Frito-Lay bags, you know, the variety pack, because I find that I like to have a variety. But at the same time, I don't like spending more than I should on, you know, a bunch of different bags. So I figured this was the best way to go. And they're smaller. So, again, I'm trying to watch my portions. But I still don't want to deprive myself because I think I've done that enough in my life. So I got some new shampoo. This is the Selsun Blue Moisturizing. This is the only kind of dandruff shampoo I'll use because it has the selenium sulfide. I find that the pyrithione zinc, which is what you find in head and shoulders, does not work on me. So I like to keep this year round and I use it year round just usually once or twice a week. But in the winter time, I kind of, you know, ramp up the usage. And then I got some like super cheap toothbrushes just because I like to clean with these. There's so many things you can do with cleaning as far as toothbrushes are concerned. You know, you can get like the little crevices in your sink. I used it on my stove top the other day when I deep cleaned it and it's just, it's so helpful. You can also use it on dishes if you want. I did get some hot fries. I don't know if I ever mentioned this to you guys, but I discovered those when I still lived in Houston and oh my God, I fell in love. I don't get them as often as I used to now because again, trying to lose weight, not gain it back. So I get it every once in a while, you know, just like as a little treat. And then I always get milk, just the vitamin D. I don't care how much fat it has in it or how many calories because Honestly, I can't stand skim milk. To me, I believe the same thing Ron Swanson does from Parks and Recreation. If you water down milk, then it's basically just water. So it's like you might as well drink the vitamin D. And it just, I don't know, it, to me it's better. I always believed that, you know, you wanna have things that are full fat, not that are partial fat because it's gonna keep you fuller longer. So, just my preference, you know, do what you want. I did get a, I don't remember how much this, like how many pounds it was, but I got a ton of Fuji apples. These are like my favorite apples other than, I can't even think of the other one, but these are so good. So I got an entire bag of those just as like a snack. 
And then I did, I got not one, but two things of celery, again, as a snack. And then some sugar snap peas that I can take with me to work. I did get three things of soup. I'm a big soup person. So I got the fat-free chicken noodle, which I would normally get regular fat, but whatever. I got the vegetable and then kicking buffalo style chicken, which I have never tried. I got a cucumber, again, for, you know, a snack. And then I have pizza night, <laughs> like once a week. So that's what that's for. I got an entire thing of chicken breasts. This is going to last me a really long time. Generally what I do is I will freeze the entire thing or sometimes what I do is I will portion this out and then I can take out what I need. So, you know, most of the time this stuff is frozen because there's no way I can get through this. Like this is probably going to take me at least three weeks, I would say, three to four weeks. So I should be set for a while. I got some of these little tomatoes. They're not necessarily great tomatoes, but there are great tomatoes in there. I love these. I take them with me to work as a snack. Hard salami for my sandwiches at work. And same thing with the pepper jack. So that is everything that I bought. Doesn't seem like much for how much I paid, but you know. For me, this is plenty, and it would have been less if I didn't need the shampoo or the toothbrushes. So anyways, they gave me two reusable bags, and they're filled with different things. So this one was actually because of the Super Bowl, and you know, they're just trying to get rid of it, so I don't know what's in here yet. I do like the reusable bag though, that's really cool. Um, so I got like... I think some coupons and that kind of thing. And then, oh, look at that. I got some pistachios. That'll be good for work. A can <laughs> of Pepsi. <laughs> That's nice. And then, I think there's just like candy in here. There's a Snickers Crisper, Snickers Peanut Butter Square. <laughs> Bless me. <laughs> Sorry guys, that's me. And then that is everything in there. And then this is, I guess, something that they give you when you first start out using, you know, their grocery service. So, I don't know what's in here either. Looks like more pamphlet things. And then another one. Got, oh, that's so nice got a new sponge. That'll be cool with the scrub dots. I've been wanting to try that, but I haven't run out of mine yet. Got, ooh, little thing of baby Takis. Those are good. And, oh, that's precious. A little thing of Dove Deep Moisture uh, body wash. So, that's nice. I can use that when I travel, whenever that happens. But, um, so, that's everything, including what came in the reusable bags. Oh God, please don't fall. How did that even get caught on there? Okay. But yeah, that's everything, including what got caught on the, or I'm sorry, what was in the reusable bags. So anyways, now that you've seen what I've purchased, I'm gonna put all this away and then I'm gonna show y'all how I meal plan. Okay guys, one last thing that I want to mention, I bought these, I think last year from Costco, they're called Instacrate, and they're made by Green Maid USA. So these are actually collapsible crates, so let me see if I can show you this. So you can see the sides kind of pop, you know, towards the center. And then you can actually have this lie flat in your car. So these are perfect, like, if you have kids or, you know, you have, like, a baby and you got to carry around a lot of shit. But personally, I like to use them for groceries. They do stack on top of each other. So that is actually how 
I'm able to get all of my groceries in here at the same time. So very, very helpful. They collapse and lie flat. So just wanted to share that with you guys. You can also use a laundry basket. I was actually doing that before when I was still in college. But this is actually super easy. And I do have stairs that I go up and it's just it's so much better to carry crates than it is to have like all the grocery bags in my hands. So just wanted to share that with you guys. You know, just something to make your life a little bit easier. Okay guys, so this is the calendar that I use for meal planning and honestly I just googled, you know, monthly calendar for 2018. So this does go till December of this year. And I tore off January because I started this about halfway through January. And I didn't have it the way that I wanted it, so I just decided to start fresh with February. But anyways, I really, really like this. This is something that I kind of picked up from somebody that I follow quite a bit here on YouTube. She has really great videos and she was the one that actually taught me how to meal plan. I have to admit that in the past I would, you know, actually I'm going to get into why I got into it before and, you know, troubleshooting and how you can do all that. But for right now, I'm just going to show you guys how I do this. So. Pretty much what happens is I will take this and I'll take just a random piece of scrap paper and I'll write down things that I feel like I want to eat that week. So you can see for last week I really wanted chicken parm. I also really wanted my garden veggie soup. I thought about having pancakes but I've been really like I've been trying to get myself to make keto pancakes <clears throat> excuse me for like two months now and it hasn't happened yet so maybe next week I don't know by the way I apologize if you can hear my washer I'm doing laundry right now and then you know I decided to do leftovers on Thursday a sandwich on Friday and then tomato tacos on Saturday and then pizza on Sunday now there's a couple things that I need to mention first of all I work three days a week I work Thursday Friday Saturday and every three weeks I work on a Sunday so I work anywhere from 12 to 14 hours, just depending on what's happening. So when I come home from work, I try to make things as simple as possible. And, you know, that includes like what I'm having for dinner. So basically, I want things that involve like little to no effort on those days because I know how tired I'm gonna be. So I wake up at around three o'clock in the morning and then I'm at work normally till 5.30, 6.30, 7, around there. It just varies. So, you know, being up that long and being at work for so long, it's very, it's kind of physically demanding. So I wanna make things relatively simple for myself. So, Anyways, with that in mind, you can kind of see how things tend to change as soon as we get into the last part of the week. So, you know, the beginning of the week, I normally do grocery shopping on Mondays. So I will do the things that I have energy for, you know, Monday through Wednesday, because those are the days that I have off. And then, you know, every couple of weeks I have to work a Sunday. So... For example, these require more energy than something like these. And again, did that on purpose because it makes my life easier. So I have to kind of keep that in mind as well, just so that it kind of works with my schedule. So like I said, I will take a scrap piece of paper, write down things that I think I might want to eat. And then what I do is I start to break it down. I break down the recipe is what I mean. So for example, with chicken parmesan, you know, you're obviously gonna, you're gonna need the chicken, you're gonna need to get some breadcrumbs. Um, the way I make it, you need a little bit of butter, you need some vegetable oil, you need the mozzarella cheese, and then you need a little bit of pasta sauce. So, you know, kind of listing out 
all the ingredients, which also kind of helps me to make it as well, you know, because sometimes I forget like the little things. So I like to kind of leave that as a note. And then what I do is I make my list. So what I've been doing is I've been taking Google Sheets on my phone and I have been making my list. So for example, this is one of them. I'm just gonna have to zoom in for you guys. So this is one of them from a couple weeks ago. Again, I apologize for my washer and doing laundry. Um, but what I like to do is I will have the item over here and then in this column, I will have how much, like, you know, the quantity. I tend to buy more than one thing or, you know, I buy things that are, you know, they go by the weight, you know, like fruits and vegetables do. And then if you get anything from the deli. And then over here, I put the total, like the total quantity. And then I put the price over here. And then at the bottom, you know, you just have a sum function to add everything up. And then when I'm done and I have completely checked out, I will put the amount in a certain color. So green is obviously good. That means I stayed within my budget. Red is bad. That means that I did not. And this, I think, really does help because you can see item for item what you've gotten and, you know, what you actually have. Another thing that is really, really helpful, let me see if I can find it on here, is I took inventory of my entire fridge, freezer, and pantry. So all I do is I just have the category and then, you know, the amount that I have and this is for everything. So I have spices, canned and jarred goods, miscellaneous, baking. I also have condiments. I call them snacky poos, but they're just snacks. Breads and then oils and fats. So I do that because, you know, sometimes when you're shopping, you, for, like, you forget what you have. So I try to make it a point to update this every week right after I go grocery shopping so that it's always up to date. And then as I finish things and I, you know, I'm done eating them or I have to toss them, I'll actually take them out of my inventory. So it's a lot of work, but it helps you to really see what you have and if you're buying excess stuff or not. So back to the meal planning. After I break down the recipes, again, you don't have to do it with, with everything because like these come in a can, so I don't have to worry about that. But after I break down the recipes, I will go into my inventory and see exactly what I need. And then I will go ahead and make my shopping list. Okay guys, I'm sorry. I had to close the door because my, my washer was driving me insane. So anyways, like I said, I will compile my list and I'll go through my inventory to see what I do and what I don't have, what I need to buy and what I don't need to. So after that, you know, I'll put everything into Google Sheets like I showed you guys and then I make my way to the store. So the bad thing about me going to the grocery store is I always pick up things that I do not need. And my mom, you know, I knew of the grocery service. I don't really know what to call it, but basically the Walmart grocery app. What you do is you go on the app and then you can choose the things that you want. They have different categories so you can get something throughout the entire store. I think except for like actual things from the deli, they don't do that. But literally everything else you can get. And you know, when you're done, they will actually have you do a pickup time. And you know, you can literally, you pay for it already with a credit card or a debit card. And then you go and you just pick it up and then you just drive home. So it's literally the easiest thing ever. And for me, this was my first week doing it. So I'm gonna show you guys what it actually looks like. So it's called Walmart Grocery. And 
hopefully this won't show the location. Um, there we go. But it's called Walmart Grocery and you can actually have favorites. So say you really like something, <clears throat> excuse me, or you buy it every single week, you know, you can tap the little heart and it'll add it to your favorites. And then add, you know, you can add it to your cart. You can change the quantity. So it's pretty cool. They have a lot more than what you're seeing. So let me show you at the bottom. The, they have departments. So Valentine's, this is just for right now, Valentine's Day, awards night, party, food and drinks, produce, meat, eggs and dairy, deli, bread and bakery, pantry, snacks, beverages, frozen, organic, special dietary needs, easy meal solutions, household essentials, beauty and personal care, baby, pets, celebrations, kitchen and dining, office and electronics, and then home and garden tools. So this I thought was really, really awesome. And then you can actually change things in your cart up to, I think it's like 45 minutes before you pick it up. So if you need to add something that you forgot, you can totally do that. Or if you wanna take something out, you can do that as well. But this I thought was such a big help. It cut down my time for getting groceries probably by about two hours. And I just, I think I'm gonna use this forever from now on. So really, really definitely a cool thing to utilize, you know, especially if you're like me and you tend to do a lot of impulse shopping, even if it's just like food items, it really does help because you can't really impulse shop that way. At least in my opinion, you can't. So anyways, it's very, very helpful. So now, you know, what I'm actually gonna do is I'm going to show you guys what I do when I get back from the store. So, you know, obviously when I get back and I have all my groceries, I put them all away. I redo my inventory beforehand so that it includes everything that I just got. And then, you know, I can see what I have. And then, you know, I'll put it all away and then I'm gonna show you guys what I do after that. Okay guys, so we're back in my kitchen and I have this little whiteboard that I got from Walmart. And this is basically another way for me to keep track of what my meal plan is for the week. So I start on Monday and I end on Sunday. So it goes this way and this is literally just a reminder. It's also kind of like me idiot proofing it because I already have the meal plan written down on my physical calendar, but you know, when I'm already in the kitchen and I'm like, hey man, let's go make some dinner. I don't wanna have to go and grab that calendar, mainly because I don't wanna get it dirty, but also because I get distracted really easily, so for me, in the time that it would take for me to go grab the calendar, I would probably be sitting down watching something on Netflix. So, like I said, kind of idiot proving it for myself. But what I like is that down here at the bottom, it has this little cork board. And this is where I put my receipts for the week. I like to have my total in my planner, which I'm going to show you guys in a separate video. You'll be able to see it. But something else that I also like to do is I have a notepad that I keep in the kitchen and then I just rip off one page per week. So this is like for when I run out of things, you know, as I'm making food or whatever, I have a running list. And then generally what I'll do is I will, you know, before I leave for the store or whatever, I will make it a point to put these on my list. So that way, again, kind of idiot proofing it. That way I don't have to be like, wait, what was that? And I don't always like to go into my phone because I think Google Sheets is kind of a pain in the ass when you do it on your phone because the screen is smaller. But anyways, that is how I like to do it. Very, I think, anal retentive. 
there's probably a more lax way to do it but for me this is what I prefer so anyways I'm going to tell you guys what I've learned from meal planning and some tips and tricks on how to be successful at it okay guys so a couple of things that I've learned along the way probably the first one would have to be if there are more people in your household than just you, you all need to be on the same page. I say that because I learned that from experience. So last year when I was still living with my mom, I really wanted to try my hand at meal planning because, you know, in my mom's house, like we waste a lot of food. It's bad to say, but it's true. And, you know, the way that we would grocery shop is, you know, every couple of days we would go get whatever we needed and we would never really do like legitimate grocery shopping because of it. And, you know, I was all like where I worked, I was right across from the grocery store. So it wasn't that big of a deal. Whereas here, the grocery store is out of my way and I also have no time and I'm kind of lazy. <laughs> but Anyways, I really wanted to try my hand at meal planning and I tried to get my mom on the same boat. So she agreed to it, but because you agree to something doesn't mean that you're actually going to actively participate, if you get what I mean. So pretty much what happened was I was trying to meal plan and my mom wasn't. So because we were not on the same page, it didn't end up working out. So my advice to you guys, especially if you live with, you know, maybe you have kids or a significant other or you're married or maybe you have a lot of people in your house is, you know, once a week when you can actually gather everybody, just sit down and be like, hey, what do y'all want to eat this week? You know, maybe some of y'all would want like pizza or maybe you'd want like tacos, you know, something like that. And it really does make a world of difference because then you're not going to have everybody coming up to you and they're like, hey, what's for dinner? What's for dinner? What's for dinner? And you don't even have to ask that yourself. So you don't have to meal plan for every single meal. But I mean, if you want to do that, you can go right ahead. But I think just doing dinner, you know, doing that alone helps immensely. So basically it's going to, you know, you kind of know what to expect. So you're giving yourself and everybody else in your household a heads up. And to me, that is never a bad idea. Um, another thing that is extremely helpful is to have theme nights. So, you know, I've kind of switched mine around just because I got bored. But when I first started out, I had like a Mexican night on Tuesdays or I would have leftover night on Thursdays. It really just depends on your situation, your household, the people who are in your household and, you know, what y'all are feeling. It really just depends. That's basically what I'm going to say for the rest of this video. Everything depends on your situation because it does. So essentially you want to, you know, when you have those meetings with your family, you want to be like, okay, so should we make this like a pizza night? Should we, should we have, you know, maybe like an Asian food night or, you know, just things like that. And it can be whatever you want. There is somebody that I follow who has like a pork night every week and you know she'll do like a different pork recipe just for that night every single week i like to do pizza night because pizza is my life pizza is delicious pizza is beautiful and i generally switch that between saturday and sunday night depending on when i have to work so again it's all very much dependent on your situation you could even do like a salad night if you're trying to lose weight. You could do different proteins. So maybe one night you do like a chicken night and then you can have like a beef night, could have a pork night, turkey, you know, it just, there's so many different things out there that you can try. It really just depends on what your preferences are. So that's another one of my 
tips for you guys because it really does cut down on you being like, so what am I making tonight? And for me personally, I do a lot of soup nights because I love soup. So, you know, again, it all depends on what you like or what you and your family like, depending on your situation. The next thing that I want to mention is that when you meal plan, it takes away a lot of the stress. So you guys know I love to plan. I don't plan out everything in my life, but I like to have a general idea. And it takes away a lot of stress when you don't have to come home and be like, okay, this is what I have in my kitchen. Like, what am I making tonight? You know what I mean? You know what to expect. You know what's going to happen. And obviously you can't do that with everything in life, but I think it's nice to be able to do it with some things just so that you, you know, the way I see it is you go to work and I would assume you are frazzled. I definitely am when I go to work. And then when you come home, you just want to chill, you know, you don't want to complicate things because you got to get up early the next day and do the same thing all over again. So it gives you, I guess, a sense of security when you do it. You know, you know what to expect, you know what's happening, you know that you have everything that you need to make that food. And it's just, it's so simple. The next thing is that you spend less money. This is something that really drove me to start meal planning in the first place because obviously I'm on a budget. I would assume most people are on a budget. I mean, why wouldn't you be unless you're like uber rich or something? I don't know. But obviously I'm on a budget. So it made sense for me to do meal planning because it helps me to save money. And, you know, it also helps me to waste less food. So those are the reasons why I do it. You know, your reasons for trying it might be completely different. But for me, that is what really resonated with me. And that's why I wanted to try it. The next thing I have to mention is you will cut down on the amount of time you spend in general you know, trying to figure out stuff about food. And what I mean by that is when you sit down a meal plan, it might take you a little while. For me, it takes probably half an hour, 15 minutes to half an hour, just kind of depending on if I'm distracted or if I can't think of anything. And just in that 15 to 30 minutes, I have already given myself so much peace because again, I know what to expect. But at the same time, you know, it just, it's, it's so simple. It's so simple. If you make it complicated, it's going to be complicated. If you keep it simple, it's going to be simple. I don't, I mean, that's probably the best thing that I can say. Um, another thing is that don't be afraid to use calendars or, you know, to ask people that you know like to meal plan because they can probably give you some really good tips too. Obviously, I'm only telling you guys what I've learned and it's only me, so I can't really answer questions that well if they pertain to having a family and meal planning. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I'm not gonna apologize for that because I don't have a family yet, so. But anyways, don't be afraid to reach out and ask other people what they like to do. You know, maybe you can swap recipes. For me personally, I like to have my own recipe binder, which I only put tried and true favorites in there so that I can refer back to them. But for the most part, what I like to do is I will Google all the time. I also like to use allrecipes.com. There is a plethora of information out there as long as you try to find it. So don't be intimidated by this. Just please do not be intimidated by this. You can do it. I believe in you. It's like anything else, though, where it takes a little bit of practice and, you know, you kind of have to figure out what your jam is. 
I would assume it's a little bit more difficult when you have little kids, but I don't know because I don't have little kids. So basically, if you want it badly enough, it, it'll work. But anyways, those are just some of my tips. Also, you know, I don't entirely recommend going into the store and I say that because like I've mentioned before I'm very bad when it comes to impulse shopping in terms of food everything else I'm good to go because I'm like nope have that have that have that with food I'm like oh well this sounds good you know what I mean so if you're like me and you struggle with that I would recommend just not even going in there you're going to save yourself a lot more money and a lot more trouble by not doing it. So if I were you, give some kind of grocery service a whirl. I mentioned that I really like the Walmart one because it's so easy. And this is probably the best part of that. I was told, and I find this to be true, that when you... Um, when you use the grocery app and say you're getting something like apples or some kind of produce or meat, it's actually a lot fresher because it comes from, you know, like the, I don't want to call it the stock room, but you know, the stock room. So whenever they get fresh, you know, fresh fruits or vegetables or whatever delivered, then they will take whatever just came off the truck and they will actually put that into your order. So basically what you're getting through that service is like fresher than what you would get if you went into the store. Keep in mind though, this is America. Is anything really that fresh? So anyways, I hope this helped you guys a little bit. I apologize, I know there's like 8,000 different things that I do for this. But that's just the way I prefer to have it because it's what makes sense to me. It's what I've gotten comfortable with. Obviously, you can simplify the shit out of this or you can make it as complicated as you want. It really just depends on the way your brain works. So anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. One last thing that I would like to mention is you might want to put your grocery total for each week. What is that sound? I'll be right back. It's probably just a button. I hope they didn't ruin my clothes. But anyways, <laughs> thank you guys so much for watching. Um, again, like I mentioned before, you might want to track how much you're actually spending per week if you are trying to stick to a budget like I am. And I wish you guys all the best if you are going to try this out and give it a shot let me know how it goes also let me know if you have any questions and i will answer them to the best of my ability keep in mind though i'm not an expert at this i'm just trying to make sure i don't spend tons of money on stupid shit so anyways thank you guys so much for watching i love you all and i will talk to you all in my next video bye guys we are getting old.